Uh, obviously, uh, representing the uh, British Farmers Union, uh, I wanted to ask, is, uh, is the new feed-in tariff uh, good news for UK farmers? Yes, I mean, there are a lot of business opportunities here across a range of technologies and indeed a, a range of scales of, de of deployment of those technologies. Now, uh, you know, will UK farmers, uh, from, you know, from what you've discussed with farmers so far, um, be important adopters of solar energy, pretty much along you know, the same lines as we've already seen in uh, such countries as Germany? Well, I think already we're seeing quite a lot of interest in the southwest of England, particularly Cornwall, uh, which probably has the best solar resource, but uh, also in uh, locations along the south coast, like the Chichester Plain, um, and frankly, uh, you know, any part of the south of England, uh, let's say south of Birmingham, um, that's where we're going to be seeing the, the most interest uh, in photovoltaics. Um, uh, can you sort of gauge at this early stage uh, the, the kind of demand from farmers? I mean, the interest level, uh, you know, from a, as a group of, uh, you know, as, a, um, as an industry in itself, you know, what, what's actually been the activity since the, the tariff was started? Well, I think, you know, in response to a number of these government policy drivers, uh, we're seeing a surge of interest uh, by the agricultural community in renewable energy of all kinds. Um, uh, photovoltaics and small wind power in particular, and uh, to some extent anaerobic digestion, all being uh, supported quite well by the feed-in tariffs. Um, clearly at the moment not a great deal has happened, but there's a great uh, deal of interest. I'm, t I'm getting a lot of uh, telephone inquiries and emails from our members interested in knowing uh, how do I go about this, who should I approach. Um, but I'm also getting a, a very large number of inquiries from technology providers and indeed investors in photovoltaics uh, who are extremely interested in doing business with our members. Um, what do you feel are some of the potential problems farmers face in adopting solar energy? I mean, are you, do you feel that uh, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot of things you have to learn? Is there you know, challenges ahead that uh, you know, need to be addressed very early on? Well, this is a new technology. Um, it's going to look rather different at different scales. Um, but some of the challenges out there, I think, are fairly familiar uh, to any farmer who's already been looking at renewable energy project development. Um, the biggest barriers generally are planning and then um, electrical grid connection. Uh, depending upon the capacity of the system, upgrading weak rural electricity networks uh, can be time consuming um, and uh, you know, we have been uh, pushing uh, the government authorities to uh, d try and make the distribution network operators, the local electricity uh, grid managers, uh, take a rather more proactive stance uh, in working with um, potential on-farm generators of all different technologies. Now, um you know, you, you said about the, uh, you certainly get a lot of interest, uh, and you also mentioned that the, that uh, private investment funds, uh, investors are looking at, you know, uh, utilising uh, dual use, uh, I'm assuming, uh, land uh, in some respects. Uh, do you expect um, UK farmers to be real early adopters of PV, you know, really actually be one of those driving forces that helps uh, uh, get the industry going in this country? Well, I think you're right that there's going to be uh, effectively two segments to the market here. Uh, it's a bit of a no-brainer putting photovoltaics onto south-facing slopes of uh, uh, farm, roof, farm building roofs. Um, and that will fit very nicely with large agricultural storage sheds in the arable sector, in the vegetable growing sector, also on horticultural buildings, and then uh, relatively large buildings uh, for intensive livestock production, chickens and pigs the like. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, yes, we have this uh, challenge of uh, how optimally to develop large field-scale arrays. Um, we really haven't done a great deal of policy work on this, but I think the acceptable kind of solution will be to demonstrate that the land is still effectively dual-purpose. It can be used for small livestock production, chickens, pigs, sheep, at the same time as deploying photovoltaics, 
Um, and this may well be targeted anyway at rather lower quality agricultural land, rather marginal land, which wouldn't be able to earn anything like that kind of income anyway. In, in essence, uh, we could see, uh, although we have an optimum solar uh, irradiation really in the, in, the, uh, in the southern part of the UK, but really that kind of describes a lot of the you know, farmlands in Wales in the north of the country. There's still, you know, people shouldn't dismiss the fact that um, that may well um, enable those kind of farms which have struggled for so long to actually you know, become, more vi you know, become viable again. Well, certainly, I think, uh, you know, across the country, um, harnessing renewable natural energy resources um, is going to be a, a very important source of basic income to many farmers in the future. Uh, it may well actually ensure the survival of farms in some parts of the country uh, where agricultural incomes are historically rather low and these new diversification opportunities into renewable energy, be it wind power or photovoltaics, uh, may well be able to keep those businesses afloat. Now obviously uh, some people are going to be concerned that uh, like we've seen mistakes being made with uh, wind farms uh, on land, this surely uh, um, isn't going to be the same kind of issue with solar. We're not, um, you know, their sort of uh, understanding about where you really should put solar compared to uh, mistakes made with wind farms. Well, I think it would be naive to ex uh, expect that uh, these kinds of new challenging, uh, um, interesting looking structures, structures that some people may regard as inappropriate, they look industrial, they don't see them fitting into natural landscapes. It would be naive to think that they're going to be welcomed absolutely everywhere. And I think the industry uh, collectively, whether it's the landowners or the technology providers or the project developers, are going to have to work very closely together on communications. Um, and uh, these projects will only come about through the, the normal planning process, through sensible uh, consultation with local communities. And there are lessons to learn here, I think, from the way that perhaps uh, wind developers in the past were almost surprised at how NIMBY groups sprang up to oppose every single potential development. And indeed, uh, the bioenergy industry is uh, having to cope with this to some extent. Just because you're a renewable energy project doesn't mean that every community is going to welcome you. But I think sensitive siting, sensitive mitigation of local visual impact with hedges and trees to screen uh, uh, what's actually inside the field, uh, and uh, again, common sense with regard to larger scale landscape impacts as well, uh, all should help inform uh, a, 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 an industry and put it on the right pathway.